All right. Hello. My name is Jen McKillop. I'm the Associate Athletic Director of Compliance at Franklin Pierce. Um, we're excited to uh, offer this virtual student athlete panel. Um, and we will uh, we'll get started by introducing um, also Sean Millerick. I'll let you go, Sean. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Sean Millerick. I'm the head men's ice hockey coach here at Franklin Pierce. All right. And we'll let the student athletes introduce themselves. Um, I'll start. My name is Ella Brownson. I am a senior women's lacrosse player and a biology major with a chemistry minor. Yeah, you can go next. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Patrick Agliardi. I'm a junior on the men's ice hockey team, and I'm a criminal justice major. I'm Riley Fedoff. I'm a sophomore on the cross country in both track and field teams, and I'm a psychology major and intelligence and security minor. All right, great. All right, we'll get started. Um, we just have a, a, a set of questions um, that kind of talk a, a bit about, we'll let the students athlete talk a bit about their, um, you know, their life at Franklin Pierce. So we'll get it rolling. The first question is, um, go through and describe a typical day in the life of um, an FPU student athlete regarding, you know, practices, workouts, um, postseason, preseason, and, and balancing classes. Um, so for our team, I know that um, our typical day really depends on whether we're in season or not. So for me being a lacrosse player, um, our, we're a spring sport. So a typical day in the spring would be um, depending on our lifting schedule that we set up um, prior to the start of the season. We would either have lifts usually in the morning, sometimes early, like six or seven. Um, and then we would all go to our classes with the earliest being an 8 a.m. Um, and then we all, my whole team and I have our individual classes. Um, it's really nice that our campus is a little bit more compact. So, you know, there's times to walk to the cafeteria and to and from classes and it's not too bad. And then um, after which our classes are all done, we'd probably have practice around like 5 p.m., which is our standard time when we're in season for two hours and then we usually have the rest of the night off to do homework or hang out with friends, have dinner and whatnot. Great. I guess I can go. Um, <laughs> usually, I mean, for me, we don't really have an off season because cross and track are all back to back seasons. So when you're in school, you're always going to practice and you're always doing homework. So it's kind of a tough schedule sometimes, but once you learn to balance it, it's pretty easy. Uh, the normal day really doesn't happen because every day is kind of different. Monday, Wednesday, Friday is usually you wake up for your first class, like Ella said, could be at 8 a.m. Uh, it could be later depending on your schedule. Kind of just go through the day and then around three o'clock have our practice and that could go for a couple hours and then usually homework for the rest of the night or get dinner and hang out with your friends. And then like Ella said, with lift schedule, uh, and we also do morning runs on Tuesday and Thursday. So we'll be up at around 6 a.m., go for a 30 minute run around 6.15, get done that, go for a lift, get done the lift, and then go to classes at 8 a.m., go through the rest of the day, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesday nights, we'll go have a practice depending on uh, if it's winter or not, if we're going to Hampton, yeah, for the milk, for the uh, dome, because we don't have an indoor track. Um, so we'll travel to the dome, but that's pretty much the average day. All right, so um, our average in-season day, it feels like we're in season like all year because winter sports are so long. Um, if it's a lift day, we'll get up at 5.30 for a 6 a.m. lift. Um, we'll lift till 7. Everyone will go to the calf together. Then people start their classes at 8, um, practice at 11.30 to 1. Um, if it's a game week, we'll typically have film around 6.37. You can eat dinner before or after that. And then just maybe relax and watch a movie or TV or something after that. So it's it's pretty jam-packed day in season. So I think it's safe to say in season is uh, for for everyone uh, here and, and also other sports that might not be represented are, are certainly jam-packed. So uh, let's let's move along to 
the recruiting process. It, uh, I think most student athletes at Franklin Pierce went through some sort of uh, recruiting process. So I want you guys to touch on <clears throat> how your process went a little bit and ultimately uh, what made you choose Franklin Pierce. Riley, if you want to start us off. Yep. Uh, so my recruiting process started kind of my junior year and I was just kind of going through the mail one day and got a piece of mail from Franklin Pierce for running and I thought that was pretty interesting because I didn't know if I would ever be able to run in college or not um, and then I kind of just talked with coach Zem a lot um, he was really nice uh, he's probably I know one of the questions coming up is one of the reasons you came here in terms of running Zem is definitely one of the reasons I came here um, from day one he always treated me like family um, just a great guy to be around. He would reach out to me after all my races and just be like, Hey, saw how you performed today. That's awesome. And then he made my decision very easy to come here. He, he was always looking out for me. He always had my best interest, even if it was me not coming to Franklin Pierce. And even now him and I maintain a pretty good relationship where I'll just go to his office and talk with him for hours. Um, whether it's about sports or not. And that's probably my, that was probably the best part about the recruiting process was how great Zem was through the entire thing. Um, I can kind of touch on my recruiting process too. So I know that every person's is really unique. Um, I was actually playing in a tournament at, um, in Lake Placid and my, our programs coach at the time um, was there watching and scouting. And she had given her card to my coach um, from the tournament. And I spoke with her on the phone afterward. And she, you know, just told me the basics about what values are at Franklin Pierce and why she was interested in me and um, what I wanted to get out of the program, and what I was looking for in a school. Um, so after several discussions with her and, you know, uh, figuring out what I really wanted in a campus and if I even wanted to play lacrosse, I did a visit and a tour um, of the school. And I think, you know, I'm from New York and the idea of coming to uh, Ringe, New Hampshire was really kind of scary for me because I've never really lived in somewhere so rural. Um, so I was very hesitant at first, but what really solidified my decision to come to Franklin Pierce was my overnight, which I know that a lot of athletes do. Um, basically, it's just one night that you spend um, with some people on the team just to get that really on-campus feel of what it's like to live there and spend the entire day um, like a college student athlete and that the people, um, how welcomed I felt and just the environment of the entire school really just sealed the deal for me and that's what made me come to Franklin Pierce. Um, so uh, hockey is so definitely a little bit different than other sports for recruiting wise. Um, I was in my third year playing junior hockey when um, I first met Coach Melrick, um, he kind of, I reached out to the school and then it kind of went back and forth with my junior team like that. And he came out and watched me play. Um, then I went and did a tour with him around the school and my mom, and I fell in love with the school. Um, I like the small campus aspect. Um, and at the time, like when you're playing juniors, and you don't get a lot of like offers like you kind of feel loyal to the first guy that says like you're gonna come here and you're gonna play so I think that that like loyalty and feeling like he was sticking his neck out for me kind of makes it really easy to come here so that's kind of what sold me it's a good answer yeah great answer all those answers are phenomenal I think it it leads to the idea of and how Franklin Pierce is of that kind of small family atmosphere the loyalty um, you know, and that's what Franklin Pierce provides. Just for those student athletes, prospective student athletes that are watching this too, um, we get this question a lot. What is the best way to contact, um, you, you know, to, to basically contact a coach or, or begin the recruiting process? We always recommend reaching out to the respective coach directly. So the emails are, we have a staff directory online. So reaching out to the respective coach or the sport you're looking to compete in, um, providing, you know, introducing yourself, obviously, and then providing any information, whether it be 
specific times of his track and field or um, game film for other sports. I know there's various ways that coaches recruit, but it's always good to start that process and introduce yourself. Um, and then, you know, the, the coach will contact you from there. All right. Um, the next question um, that we, you know, that we have for you guys is, can you talk a little bit about the support systems at Franklin Pierce University that help you balance, you know, the rigors of being a student athlete um, in the NE10, which is one of the most competitive conferences, Division II conferences in the country? Yeah, I can right. start this one. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, you can go. No, you can no, go. go ahead. Okay. So, um, I think one of the biggest things is coaches and teammates. Um, that's probably the biggest, and especially I know with track, I'm not sure about other teams, is we have mandatory study halls our freshman year. And then if your grades are kind of starting to slide, you can have, you can be in study hall until you're a senior, unless you want to get your grades up. But um, the biggest thing for me has always been my peers and coaches just like always helping me because your classes are so small and teams are fairly large that usually your teammates are also in your classes with you. So usually after practice and stuff like that, if you have questions or something, you can talk with your friends or the campus is so small, you can meet up with friends from classes to help you study. Um, but probably some of the best resources on campus are the Center of Academic Excellence. Um, there's tutors. I know I'm a tutor at for the CAE for biology, and I know that helps a lot of students. And I think the coaches, when they push, uh, I know Zem pushes us pretty hard to be not only good athletes, but good students as well. And when you have a person doing that for you, you want to succeed and you want to do better for that, not only yourself, but for the people trying to help you as well. Yeah, I think Riley said it best, um, just relying on those close networks that you make, not only in your team, um, but like he said, in the Center of Academic Excellence, um, we really rely on tutors that have taken the classes prior. So the tutors are usually selected by a professor um, who recognized that a student particularly excelled in that class. So you're getting the lessons broken down and you're getting extra help from someone who has been in your exact shoes. And that is just so um, rewarding and really helpful. Um, in addition, we also have the Wentzburg Writing Center, which is a tutoring center that is used for um, just help with writing projects. And I actually had the pleasure of being able to work there for all four years of being in school. Um, and you can bring any type of writing assignment you have and get individuals looking at your own projects one-on-one -on -one with you. And it's just um, a really good resource to have. Yeah, they both pretty much hit the nail on the head. It just feels like everyone at the school wants you to like succeed. Like everyone's looking out for you. Um, I know that there's like the men's assistant basketball coach kind of, he's like an academic, he like, he checks up on you if you're like slipping. Um, I've never had to use him, but he definitely seems like a good resource. Like if you feel like you're like slipping in a class, you can email him and he'll reach out to you and help you out. So. That's a great point. Um, Eric McKinnon, who's our uh, athletic um, academic liaison, also the men's assistant basketball coach, um, is a phenomenal position that assists all the student athletes um, with registering, with yes, tutoring if they need it. So just to have that personalized touch within our, you know, the CAE for athletics is, um, is great. And I think too, uh, just to hit on that real quick, it's easy to have like the support systems in place. It's easy to have the tutoring center, the writing center. It's easy to hire someone who's, uh, you know, can help student athletes. But when we talk about this a lot with our team is everyone pulling the rope, you know, in the same direction. And you really feel that at Franklin Pierce where, you know, from the president to the administration, you know, right down to the athletic department, everyone wants to, you know, succeed and everyone is there for that individual and, you know, is able to meet those needs. And we're a smaller school and, it, and you know, there's um, no way you're really going to fall through the cracks here. So I think that's, that's one thing that is really nice for our students and especially our student athletes who have, you know, what you heard earlier, the, the rigorous schedules where it's lifts, study halls, practices, travel. And, and I think that's, that's one thing that's really nice here at Pierce. So uh, on the, the subject of travel, let's just talk a little bit about game day travel if we can just you know maybe hit that like 30 seconds each 
of what it looks like for you and you know classes that you miss and how you uh, make up that work and things like that so um prior to the start of the season we get a form from our coaches that is basically like a permission slip almost that um you outline you go through your syllabus and um your course schedule and you look at every single away game which um you know our uh conference is pretty big so we traveled you know to new york um which can sometimes be a long trip um so you have to really plan out and look at your course schedule and figure out what classes you're going to miss um, and then you can look at your syllabus and see if you know that's the same day as an exam or quizzes um, and then so you compile that all on that paper get it signed by your coaches and then you can bring it to your professor and they will sign it as well and work with you to figure out what assignments you're missing um, and how to compensate or plan around that um, so all of our professors are really um, helpful and uh, understanding working with student athletes um, at least from what I've experienced and a uh, typical day, it really depends on um, where we're going, what time the game is. So sometimes we'll usually, um, our team, we got a little spoiled. We would have like our coach bring bagels or some kind of meal snacks um, before, and we would meet like in the gym or somewhere where the buses were picking us up, have a quick bite and then hop on the bus. Sometimes we'd bring homework or just, you know, we have portable Wi-Fi, which is great. And um, then we could take the trip and then crush our opponents and then uh, drive home and have a good time. Well, I think that was, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, Pat, do you want to talk a little bit about game day experience on campus and what that looks like for our teams? Yeah. Um, so on a game day on campus, it's usually Friday, Saturday, sometimes a weekday, like a Wednesday. Um, the games are usually at seven, so you'll go, you'll go to all your classes. Um, usually there'll be maybe a team stretch or something in the morning. Um, you get time to make sure you eat well all day, hydrate. Um, then around for hockey, around if the game's at seven, probably be at the rink by four forty-five. So you'll take off there. Um, at the rink, there's a huge snack table, like you're definitely not going to be hungry or anything by the time you're at the rink. Um, you got to stay away from the gummy bears. Yeah, no gummy worms. Um, there's beef jerky, good stuff, peanut butter and jelly, water bottles, uh, a huge spread. Um, and then, yeah, just get ready. Um, by the time the, this year, the fans were good. By the time game time was coming around, the fans were just pouring in. Um, yeah, it's it just feels like uh, like a home game is just such a small campus that everyone is looking out for each other. So great. Well, um, we'll wrap up here with the last question, um, and I think it's pertinent to to everyone here. Is what's your next step after graduation? What are what are your plans for the future um, moving forward? So being that I'm a senior, um, I've had to make these plans a little bit sooner than I expected, but um, I am uh, planning on doing a gap year, which is always kind of part of my plan um, to work and study and take my MCAT exams because I'm planning on going to medical school after a year of saving up and um, just getting some more life experience before diving back into uh, continuing my education. Brother, right, you want to go? Yeah, I'll go. Um, so I'm kind of in a unique position, um, which I kind of put myself in. I did so many classes in high school that were uh, college classes that technically right now I'm a junior. So I'm actually graduating next year. And then I've already talked with coach and I'm thinking about doing grad school here as well. So I'm probably gonna be hanging around for a little bit longer. And, um, but I'm actually already looking in a job for the Vermont State Police and then I'm going to try and work up the ladder. And then I'm thinking one day trying to get into the FBI. Yeah, so I'm a criminal justice major. I'm a junior right now. Um, I'll be graduating next year, too. Um, I feel like I haven't really looked into too many like job opportunities yet. I'll definitely just wait till I graduate to figure out. I just I want to be a cop, so just find an academy, something like that. Um, I I don't know what where I want to do it with state, um, so we'll see. I'm open to anything. So, great, 
Great. Uh, Sean, do you have anything to add before we wrap it up? I don't. It was a pleasure uh, giving you guys some info. I hope uh, this was worth your time. And uh, thank you guys to, uh, for filling in here uh, and, and helping us out. Yeah, thank you guys so much and um, have a great rest of the week.